BCTV Zerlin Boyden here, back to kick off another weekly edition of BCTV's Media Roundup at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time right here on Comcast Cable Channel 8. We're going to take a look at all the area happenings. We'll get you prepped for a weekend's worth of events here in downtown Brattleboro, peruse the headlines, and plenty more on an episode here that includes the select boards. Also, that I-91 bridge project, it's uh, getting underway, but you've got till 2016 before that's all cleared up. And the skate park is back. We'll get the follow-up story on that all that and more we're gonna do it in 15 minutes or less because that's all the time we've got scheduled here on channel 8 but if you've got the time and the attention span getting ready to go into this weekend why not sit down with us for a moment here on 545 live and stick with us all right just so we understand mm -hmm. is it fair to say that the restaurant you're opening is not affiliated with Panda North no Okay, it's not affiliated with Panda yeah. North. Yeah. It's Panda West, but it's totally separate. Yes. It's separate. Okay. Yes. I guess that helps us a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Welcome back to this November 8th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyd, and I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news as we uh, get set for a, a first edition, inaugural edition from downtown Brattleboro. Of course, the rooftop studios at our 230 Main Street uh, BCTV Palisade. A little too cold these days uh, to go live from up there without any insulation. Thus, we are in downtown Brattleboro once more for another evening edition here on Fridays at 5.45 p.m. That's footage uh, from this week's Brattleboro Select Board meeting on Tuesday with members of the board uh, quizzing Ji Guang Wang, a local restauranteur seeking a liquor license for a new West Brattleboro Chinese and sushi place. It came under fire in the press last week after it was released that the establishment would be going under the name Panda West, despite its lack of affiliation with the longtime Putney Road Chinese food restaurant Panda North, whose owners were none too happy about a new panda in town, though they were assured by the Vermont Secretary of State and Corporations Division that the panda title has been distributed to uh, Chinese food restaurants across the state, regardless of their affiliation with one another. All right, uh, plenty more to keep going with as far as select board reports here, but perhaps the biggest uh, agenda item um, this uh, coming out of this meeting here on Tuesday was the return of the skate park. Son of the skate park, the skate park strikes back. Skate park to die harder. Take your pick. Uh, we're going to launch into it here with a new special courtesy of our hardworking 545 Live intern Zeb Hathaway, who uh, this summer uh, went back through two years worth of skate park municipal coverage to get you this clip. Let's get you caught up. In a recent resurgence of Brattleboro area skate park news, the extremely controversial park is under heated debate again. With the funding slowly running out, the committee at Brattleboro area skate park is coming. Basic will come before the select board to converse about new plans for the skate park idea for the Kroll lot. Though the basic committee is not scheduled to meet with the board, Carol Lalotte, the recreation and parks director, encourages the basic community to meet with the select board before firm plans are created about the skate park's future. In Thursday night's meeting, the board and the basic committee discussed two pressing issues. The first being the two-year development review board approved building permit that expired on the 15th of August this year. And no matter what, the basic committee will have to apply for a new permit. The second issue is the dwindling amount of funds accessible for the development of the park. After three years of excessive fundraising, the board only has about $100,000 available of the projected necessary $350,000 from the 2011 estimation. The point is, there is goodwill among the opponents. I would love to see something built. For BCTV, this is Zeb Hathaway. Before we move on uh, in the stories here from that Brattleboro Select Board meeting, which is up in its entirety at brattleborotv.org if you'd like to stream it at your leisure, uh, Select Board member Kate O'Connor was on the front page this week as it was announced that she would be stepping into the position of Brattleboro Area Chamber of Commerce Director uh, as it was announced earlier this year that uh, Tenured Director Jerry Goldberg would be uh, retiring at the end of this year. At a special ceremony earlier this week, he received an award amongst congratulations from an awfully heartfelt crowd. And before we leave the Brattleboro Municipal Realm in Brattleboro here, we'll head back into the newsroom and talk about the hunt for a new town manager in Brattleboro, with Select Board Chair David Gardenstein reporting last week that the Citizen Committee tasked with finding a permanent replacement for the departed town manager Barb Sondag uh, has whittled down the 60 applicants vying for the town's top position to just two remaining applicants. And while Gardenstein was less than forthcoming with additional details in a Reformer article last week on the subject, he did say the board and committee were still working through, quote, protocols of the final hiring stages. 
uh, much of which will happen in executive session, though he did remind the public that uh, any final decisions will happen on the record and thus in front of BCTV's cameras at a regularly scheduled select board meeting. In the meantime, we've got a town manager special. This was put together uh, earlier in the summer when it was first announced that town manager Barb Sondag would be departing this year. We've got uh, a clip uh, among the topics. Was that of uh, adding a mayor to Brattleboro? Let's take a look. You have to look at it in terms of what's going on in the world you live right now. It's no secret that Brattleboro's penchant for controversy adds its own set of requisites to the position of town manager. There really are a lot of people who, who um, keep up with what's happening in the town. But for Barb Sondag, the municipality's reigning chief for the last seven years, the ante has been even higher. With a historic downtown fire, tropical storm and flood, an extra dose of lawsuits and budget brujas checkering her tenure, it should perhaps come as less of a surprise than it did to the community when Sondag announced she would be calling it quits on her remarkable run as one of the town's most respected managers. Barb Sondag, the town manager, has been offered and has accepted a uh, position as city administrator in Olivet, Missouri. So what does that mean for Brattleboro, a town juggling the state's third highest population ahead of six of the state's nine listed cities, including the capital, and fresh off a charter revision, hungry as ever for a new debate? How about trading in the town manager, a position indirectly controlled by the masses through the electing of select board members, for a more direct reflection of democracy? A town mayor. What do you want to emphasize? You don't want to hire what you what you have or what you had because you want to build on what you have and what you had. And while there are still two applicants left, we'll get you all the news as uh, it comes to us on this town manager position. Uh, interim town manager Patrick Moreland, who's been seen around town lending a helping hand in trying times, uh, did not uh, apply for the position. That's the news there. Right. Moving on, it's not every day that teens are encouraged to spray paint graffiti on downtown business owners' property. That's exactly what a group of AMS and BOHS students were up to at Gallery Walk this past week. Part of an effort organized by the Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition to promote healthy, smoke-free zones in downtown with the addition of the campaign's logo spray-painted on sidewalks uh, in front of local shops and matched with storefront displays, something BAPC Project and Policy Coordinator Cassandra Holloway was in our downtown studios all this week to help produce a video on. Let's take a look at the special. During November's Gallery Walk, Brattleboro Area Prevention Coalition teamed up with local teens to create awareness about the dangers of secondhand smoke and to promote smoke-free zone signs throughout the community. During the Great American Smokeout on November 21st, they will be offering downtown Brattleboro businesses with smoke-free zone window decals. You can find Cassandra's full special up uh, at youtube.com slash TV and of course on our official website page brittlebrotv.org. All right, with that, we'll continue in the stories here. Moving on, today marks the 75th anniversary of Crystal Night, or the Night of Broken Glass. Not one, but three nights and days, in fact, of violent riots that broke out across Germany in November of 1938, leading to the detaining of 30,000 Jewish men, the majority of whom would never see their freedom again. And it's with this 75th anniversary in mind that last night the Cohen Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Keene State College hosted a Crystal Night Remembrance talk at the Colonial Theater, which included a first-hand account from Holocaust survivor Michael Berenbaum. Uh, that's something that our 545 Live analyst Robert Stack spoke about the importance of preserving as we sit on the edge of a new era where only second-hand accounts remain of one of the most tragic and terrifying chapters in our world's history. It was that moment why Crystal Night is so scary, is that what they did, they said no longer will these be random acts of violence, but this will be state sanctioned. And we will do it in a way that we will eliminate the Jew from Germany. And once the borders were closed and they could no longer force them out of the country, that was the beginning of the annihilation and the murder of six million Jews. 545 Live analyst Robert Stack in our downtown studios last week talking about today's 75th anniversary of Kristallnacht. Find the full 545 Live special with Robert, who once studied alongside renowned Holocaust author and scholar Raul Hilberg on BCTV's Facebook page now, or running as its own 15-minute cable special all next week on BCTV Comcast Channel 8. All right, with that, we'll uh, move on to a less somber, uh, more mundane daily note, but one that uh, should have an impact on anyone commuting uh, to and from Brattleboro or the surrounding areas. 
That's the construction project of the I-91 bridge in Brattleboro, the span uh, that crosses the West River between exits 2 and 3 in Brattleboro, a project which uh, officially kicked off uh, this Monday with uh, dismantling beginning on the bridge is scheduled to wrap up in 2016, so plenty of time uh, to get behind that uh, project there. It'll see sections of Upper Dummerston Road, Route 30, and of course uh, Interstate 91 closed. They'll try and keep uh, the interstate to one lane at all times as they do it in a multi-part process. Taking a look at some footage as they got the cranes out to start uh, taking this bridge. Next up, Project Feed the Thousands announced its annual kickoff this week on a mission to again raise $100,000. 25 tractor trailer trucks worth of food for area residents. Uh, there'll be donation bins at every grocery store around the area, uh, and food donations are uh, more than welcome. But, says project co-chair Kelly Corbeil, money sure works as well. Cash donations are so, so important, and that gets them through the year. And they can buy an awful lot of food with the cash they get. So it's, it's just imperative that they receive it. And you can keep an eye out at Area Banks for Project Feed the Thousand donation boxes uh, and catch a, a full interview that included uh, some heartfelt words from WTSA's Tim Johnson as he hosted Project Co-Chair Kelly Corbeil uh, along with the Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center's Lucy Fortier and uh, Jerry Goldberg of the Brattleboro Area Chamber of Commerce uh, to talk a little bit about the importance of Project Feed the Thousands this year. All right, uh, we'll stick right here on the close-up and move on in our stories. Talk Entergy for a moment. They're back in the news again this week. Uh, as statewide media outlets jumped on the news that Entergy would again be petitioning federal judges for money, this time looking to recoup uh, the more than $4 million the Louisiana-based Energy Corporation says their prolonged battle in court against the state of Vermont cost them. Uh, and while this year's New York City appellate court ruling that found in Entergy's favor over continued operation did deny their request for restitution, it looks like the state can't uh, count that $4 million as being off the table quite yet. We'll uh, follow up uh, with that story as we learn more, uh, but in the meantime, that just about does it here on a full 15-minute uh, broadcast at week's end here for 545 Live and BCTV. But before we uh, let you go out for the weekend, there's plenty of good stuff going on in the area, and for more, we'll uh, get a clip from our weekly uh, online webisode special, BCTV's interactive video calendar. I've been hosting it standing in front of BCTV's massive video wall to host an interactive look where you can get clickable links if you're watching on YouTube. Let's take a look at uh, some of this weekend's events now. We're going to bounce all the way ahead to Tuesday, November 12th here and uh, take a look at uh, the event there that says Minding the Mind. It's from the Northeast Psycho Neuro Immunology Institute for Healing, or the Northeast PNI, as they get set to host Minding the Mind, keeping tabs on your changing brain, a talk featuring renowned brain enthusiast Alex Potter and his ruminations on the regenerative and evolving capacity of the extraordinary organ that is your brain. Now, that's a topic that any PNI staffer, Michael Bosworth, says should play to people of any scientific background. Although, you know, there might be more emphasis on people as they are growing older, but it could be any, any aged person, you know, any aged person is welcome to come because they think they would find it interesting just finding out more about uh, how the brain functions and what you can do with your brain by, by just various techniques that we try to emphasize that help your, your brain to work better. I better wrap up as I see the time ticking down behind me. Thanks for checking in on another full-sized edition of 545 Live. We'll be back all next week with a series of web uploads. You can subscribe at youtube.com slash TV to get those updates or join us uh, at week's end each week, Friday, 545 p.m. on BCTV Comcast Channel 8 when we'll sum it all up and break it down for you. In the meantime, thanks for watching.